The Handley Page typo was a bomber originally used by Britain during World War I. At the time, it was the largest aircraft built in the UK and one of the largest in the world. When Britain entered the war in August 1914, the threat posed by German Zeppelin bombers seemed very real, and the Admiralty was tasked with protecting Britain from air attacks for which they were completely unprepared. Since the difficulty of intercepting Zeppelins was unknown, the Admiralty decided to focus the attack strategy on bases and factories. In practice, this proved difficult due to the limited range of aircraft of the time and the number of small bombs they could carry. It was clear that to be effective, the Royal Naval Aviation Authority needed a much larger aircraft, or, as Chief of Naval Aviation Murray Seward put it, a man with hemiplegia. Dot as a result, a specification was issued in December 1914 for a long-range patrol bomber. Handley Page Typo was born to solve the difficulties at that time. The biplane bomber was first used by the British during World War I. It is made with two main versions, Handley Page 0100 and Handley Page 0400. Arguably, Handley Page responded with a giant biplane with a wingspan of 100 feet, the origin of the 0100 notation. The prototype flew on 7 December 1915 and featured a glass cockpit and thick armor around the crew and engine compartment. This aircraft proved to be inefficient, so the glass and armor were removed from the second prototype, which flew in April next year, and formed the basis for mass production of the machine. The O-100 was a bomber version originally built for RNAs. It had two Rolls-Royce Eagle II engines with 260 horsepower.4 prototypes, and 42 production aircraft were built. By August, there were enough O-100 to form a squadron, to operate in France by the end of 1916. Their first battle took place on the night of March 16, 1917, when they were dispatched. Bomber Railroad Junction. A total of 46 O-100s were built. The O-100s were also used for anti-U patrols off the mouth of the River Tees in September 1917, while a single O-100 was flown to Maudros on the Greek island of Lemnos, used for carrying out missions carried out bombing raids on Constantinople. The success of this type prompted the development of an upgraded version with more powerful engines and other improvements, and in the spring of 1917 a more refined version, the O-400, was introduced introduce. The O-400 was Britain's first strategic bomber and, for many months, the largest aircraft assembled in the British Isles. It carried out successful missions throughout Germany and was also the site of the greatest Allied bombs of the war. They were also originally used for daylight raids, damaging a German destroyer on 23 April 1917, but the loss of an attack aircraft two days later led to the switch to night attacks, often by single aircraft, against German-occupied ports and railways target and airport. This differs mainly in having a more powerful engine and a fuel system that has been moved from the nanoscale to the fuselage. This version was issued to the RAF's Independence Force and fitted its first strategic bomber units. In response to Gotha's various attacks on London, the Air Force ordered the O-400s to attack the German mainland once more. The Handley Page 0400 Mammoth Armament consists of three Lewis-type machine gun systems mounted in different defensive positions on the fuselage. Armament impresses with the ability to drop 16x112 pounds or 8x250 pounds bombs. The bombing was carried out via the Drift Sight MK1A bomber gun designed by LT Commander Wimpress. The system is capable of processing airborne information for use by bombers in current drift, speed, and altitude forms to improve bombing capabilities over its predecessor. In general, the system was in effect until the end of the war, showing full operation with no less than 11 RAF squadrons operating throughout the British Empire. First flight in 1918, more than 400 were delivered before Armistice Day. Another 107 were built in the United States by Standard Aircraft Corporation, out of 1,500 orders for the squadron. Once in service, the O-400s could carry a new 1,650 pounds bomb and were deployed in force, with up to 40 aircraft participating in a raid. A single O-400 also served with the 1st Squadron, Australian Flying Corps in the Middle East.
On the evening of August 25, 1918, two machines from 215 Squadron did exactly that by successfully staging a low-altitude raid that severely damaged a chemical plant. Matter. Substance in Mannheim beginning in September of that year, O400s were deployed to German targets in groups of about 40, day, and night, with good effect. Some of these planes dropped a 1,650-pound bomb Britain's largest on industrial targets in the Rhineland. By the time of the armistice, 440 O400s had been produced and were replaced by an even larger one, the V1500. Both were in turn replaced by the Vickers by me in the 1920s. After the war, the O400 remained in service in the UK until it was replaced by the Vickers by me in late 1919. About 10 surplus fighters were delivered by Handley Page's pioneer airline Handley Page Transport. Converted for civilian use in the UK and India. Eight O400s are equipped with passenger accommodation and operated by Wing 86, established in Hendon to provide rapid transit service between London and Paris to visiting officials. Treaty negotiations. Treaty of Versailles. Two are finished in silver, named Great Britain and Silver Star, and fitted as VIP transport, while the other, sitting in number eight, remains the same dark blue. Some of the last bombers produced for the Chinese military were the O-7. And after delivery in China were regrouped in Nanyuan, near Beijing. The first transport and passenger plane sent air mail between Beijing and Tientsin on May 7, 1920. The Civil War interrupted these lines and they were taken over by several warlords. Interestingly, before 1924, Handley Page used an alphabetic system to designate aircraft, and thus Type O followed Type M and Type N however, Type O aircraft were very commonly placed. Change. Name. Dot mistakenly referred to as Handley Page 0100 and 0400 in publications, the numeral 0 replaces the letter O. Oddly enough, Handley Page has used the Type I notation explicitly in the past, perhaps to avoid confusion with the digit, but omitting the O would cause problems. However, there have also been a few unfortunate incidents and accidents that have happened with this type of aircraft. Specifically, on 19 August 1918, a Type 0400D4593 RAF crashed at Maxtuck during a test flight from Castle Bromwich Airport, killing all seven people on board. The fabric from one wing was ripped off, causing a loss of control. On the other hand, on May 17, 1919, a Type 0400 carrying T. Lawrence to Egypt crashed at Roma Centicel Airport. The pilot and co-pilot were killed, while Lawrence survived the incident with a broken shoulder blade and two broken ribs. Then, on December 14, 1920, a Handley Page Transport 0400 operating from the company's airport at Cricklewood crashed during takeoff and crashed into a tree in Cricklewood. Golders Green, killing two of the crew and two of the six passengers. And up until this point, we all don't want those incidents to happen. Even so, the typo was so impressive that for many years after the war, any large aircraft in Britain was referred to as the Handy Page, even being included in the dictionary. Furthermore, the plane plays a prominent role in William Faulkner's short story Turnabout. The story provides an insider's look at what it feels like to pilot a typo in combat. The importance of Type O to the company cannot be overstated, making it a major manufacturer of multi-engine aircraft. Maybe in the video, the voice is not perfect, but the above content is my long-term research effort, I hope you understand, so that I have the motivation to make the next good videos. As always, if you like this video, hit the like button to support us. Subscribe and hit the notification bell if you want to be one of the first to know more about our videos. And now is the time to hear from you.